Wake up, my friend. Wake up. Because the message I'll share with you today is something that will help you remember the power of your mind. Will help you remember a truth that you have forgotten. Will help you step in your power and give reality the direction of your desires. Reality was yours. Whether you accept that or not, it does not matter. Reality was yours even before you decided it. Whether you position yourself as somebody to whom reality happens, as a victim to reality, whether you position yourself as somebody who does reality, who helps reality happen, who is hustling to make reality happen, or whether you see yourself as somebody who is as reality is, either way, reality was yours before you decided it. And I am here to show you why and to help you practice that through your everyday experience. So you are aware of Neville Goddard's teaching. You are aware of the Wall of Assumption. You've studied it. You have practiced. You have read the books. You are manifesting your desired reality. And yet you find yourself doubting. What now? When would my desire come? When is my time? If you've catched yourself having these thoughts, how can you shift them to come from the end and give your reality, whatever it is, the power to manifest what you want? Here is how it happens. Just a couple of days ago, I was outside and I was in this doubtful, worried state of whether what I want is coming and when it would come. And I was just recalling what I have learned from Neville. And this quote popped into my mind, this simple quote, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet received, not yet seen. So this quote, it was just running around in my mind and I was like, well, there must be some meaning to that. It, I wouldn't have remembered it by accident. So it has purpose to come in my mind right now. And I started contemplating on it because I never truly understood what faith is, to be fully honest. And so I wanted to grasp a deeper understanding of faith, what faith is. Having faith in the I am, in the power of my awareness. But how did that happen? How did it work? And so I was just staying there at one monument. I sat down and I was... I went into meditation and started contemplating on this simple quote. And so this, this simple passage from Neville Books, this simple quote, it actually turned out to be a really powerful practice that I want to share with you right now. And it has two sides behind it. Let's start with the first side, which is faith is the substance of things hoped for. So wherever you are in your life right now, Whatever you're trying to manifest, what you, what, whatever you're hoping to manifest, to experience, okay? So, if faith is the substance of things hoped for, this means that anytime you experience a state of consciousness, which is not a confirmation of what you want to manifest, it's not the joy, it's not the light of having it, it's not gratitude, it's not the bliss of having what you want, being in the consciousness of having what you want. Whenever you experience any form of doubt, worry, fear, something in those lines, this first part of the quote, it actually gives you permission to extract faith out of what you're hoping for. Now, how does that work? You know what you want, right? In your mind, you have awareness of it. Okay, so you have that awareness. Knowing what you want, and yet experiencing in your emotional state the opposite of what you want, doubt, worry, fear, whatever it is. If you were to remember at this moment in time, recall yourself that your reality is speaking to you, it's giving you a sign. It's literally asking you, but who do you say I am? That circumstance, that worried, doubtful state of being is asking you, 
But who do you say I am? What do you say I am? I am aware of you. I am aware of my body experiencing that state. Doubtful, worried, fearful state. Who do you say I am? As if you are speaking to your feelings, as if you are spirit speaking to the circumstance that triggered this state of being. Since we know that reality is complete, this is obvious. Nebu speaks about it a lot in his books. Since we know reality is complete, which means that your I am, I am aware, is everywhere. It's non-vocal. It's impersonal. It is in everything, everywhere. You have awareness. It's non-vocal awareness, which means that you exist inside of your awareness. And whenever a circumstance happens that's not to your liking, that's not to your preference, it is simply asking you this question. But what? But who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? If you trigger fear, worry, doubt, who do you say I am? And this simple question awakens your power, wakes you up. It's literally shaking you up into reality, reality being complete. And then allows you to bring awareness to the unconscious story you have identified yourself with, to the inner conversation you have identified yourself with, which creates that state of being. The circumstance triggered it, the story triggered the feelings, and now you bring awareness to the feelings. The feelings ask you, the circumstances ask you, but who do you say I am? Previously, I've had conviction in my desire. Right now, I'm doubting, I'm worried, I'm scared, I'm fearful. Who do you say I am? I have forgotten. So, the circumstance you experience, it's a reminder for you to wake up and give power, give meaning to that circumstance. Because ultimately, it is meaningless. It is simply your awareness of being. Unconsciously, you have identified yourself with a story. And now, since you've woken up, you give meaning back to that circumstance. You overpower it with your frequency, with your decision, with your conviction. And this is how you extract the faith out of it. If the circumstance wakes you up to your I am, to your place of power, faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you've been hoping for what you want, but you are not convicted in it once you catch yourself in that state of being, then you extract the faith from it and give meaning to the circumstance. Whatever meaning you want to give it, it's done. It's done. It's complete. You can relax. You've got it. It's done. You don't have to worry. Your desires are God's desires. It is done. Have faith. Surrender. Let it come. It's done. Giving this kind of meaning to the circumstance allows you to step in faith. Does this make sense? Do you see how the first part of this passage, of this, um, of this quote, is simply asking you to let go of your doubts, worries, fears that are stemming from hope. Hope is not conviction. Hope is a state of doubting. Okay? Faith is conviction. Having faith in your I am, in your power, in your desire, knowing that it comes from God, knowing that it's already done, it is yours. Hope is a state of weakness. If you hope you're not in your power, you're looking for an external authority to confirm to you that your desire is yours, that you have chosen your desire. You haven't taken ownership of it. It's still in a state of resistance. And so anytime you experience hope, you want to extract the faith out of it by reaffirming it is done. And now the second part of the passage. Faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. Which simply means that faith being the evidence of things not yet seen. And this is what happened to me while I was, I was sitting at that monument and just experiencing this practice from contemplating on that quote. Once I was able to let go of that doubt and worry and fearful state of being, it has come up. It made me feel really warm. My presence has expanded. And then an image appeared of what I wanted. And now faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. So it was simply a decision that I needed to make to 
embody the state of being I would experience in response to what I was seeing. Because faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. So it's like you accept what you see in your imagination as real. You give yourself permission to experience what you see in your imagination as real so that it changes your state of being. Through the inner conversation, through speaking with the circumstance and with the feelings that triggered these feelings of worry, doubt, and that made you hopeful. And by speaking with those feelings, you let them come up and you transform them and you give them to what you see. And since faith is the evidence of things not yet seen, now that you have given your feelings, neutralized them, and you've given them to the image you see, the feelings get transformed into accomplishment, into the white, into joy, into the feeling of I've won, I've done it, it is done, I am here. And then you let yourself enjoy those feelings. So if I had a simple message that I wanted to convey to you right now, is that reality was already yours even before you decided it. It was already yours. Whether you gave power to what you didn't want and you succumbed into it, it has taken away your power. Or whether you have used what you didn't want and seen as a circumstance to gain your power out of it, to wake up and to charge your vision, to remind yourself, to bring alive that conviction, to give life to your conviction. Whether you decide the first or the second, Either way, reality was yours, even before that decision. It's just in the first decision, you unconsciously decided to perpetuate the unconscious story you have identified yourself. While in the second decision, you gave the meaning you have decided you want to give to the circumstance you experience. So it has awakened you. It has reminded you that it is done. So congratulations, my friend, it's done. There is nothing else that you need to do. It's simply a remembrance that it is done. I've done enough. It's, it is here. I see it in my mind's eye, in my imagination. And that imaginary act is enough for me to experience the state of being that it is done. And since feeling is the secret, since the mind doesn't make a distinction between what is imaginary and what's real, if you stay persist in the end in that convicted state of it is done it has been done there is nothing else to be done you did it you are right you are in the end so how does it feel to be in the end how does it feel to be empowered knowing that what you want is done it's here knowing that you can finally relax finally enjoy the delight of having what you want since you know that it is god's desire this, my friend, is what your doubts and worries are asking you for. Remember, reality is complete. Every reality is complete. So your circumstances that make you doubt, they simply are here to wake you up to the fact that it is done. To help you recall that state of conviction so that you can enjoy it. You can surrender into it. And this is your power. This was my message for me today, a Neville Goddard contemplation. And this is the practice I discovered. So if you like this video, like it, subscribe to the channel. If you're new to it, comment down below. And I would really love to see you around because I have so many things prepared for this channel. And it's, it's amazing. I would love to have you in that tribe that I am gathering. Thank you so much and see you around, my friend. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day.